Well, Merry Christmas to you all. All right, amen. Well, uh, as advertised to many of you, this will be a very short message. I remember one year I preached a full exegetical message on Christmas Eve, and I thought it was a good message, and it probably was. But afterwards, I heard from many mothers about that choice and that decision. And so today will be a very short message. Now, we've said it in many different ways during this Advent season, but the season of Advent that we've just walked through together in many ways is a season that's about longing. And because this season has been around for so long now, for hundreds of years, we see this longing happen in many different iterations in the culture and in the world around us. On a very surface level, it's a time of the year when marketing gets kicked into high gear and Amazon hires more people in their fulfillment centers to sort of try to keep up with this desire, not to whip up and to keep up with this desire for novelty and things and this longing for something new in their life. On a deeper level, this season cultivates a longing for us to focus more on friends and family. And so many of you, I think many of you are traveling after this day, going somewhere, uh, hopefully Monday, not tomorrow. But we, uh, we travel, we visit friends and families, we send Christmas cards, which I have to admit I love getting, but I've had many a traumatic experience making. <laughs> Any kids in the room, you know what I'm talking about? It's a time where we focus in on connecting with others, friends and family, and that's important. Deeper still, deeper still, if you've been with us as we've walked through the book of Isaiah, if you've read through any of that book together or listened to any of those messages together with us, this season helps us to cultivate a longing and a desire for a better world, for peace to truly reign on this earth, that guns and swords would be beaten into plowshares to cultivate life. It's a place that we long for greenery, vegetables, crops to sprout out of a dry and parched land, both physically and spiritually. We long for a better world. And sometimes during this season where we're quiet, where we reflect or we pray, we go to a place where we, we don't just say things like, yes, I really want peace on the earth, but we truly and deeply long for peace to be present all around the earth. So, Lord, we do pray, come and make that so. And finally, for many of us in our more spiritually aware moments where we're seeking the Lord or we're spending time in the Scriptures or we hear a song that we connect with, for a second, this season helps us to cultivate a desire to open our hearts for the presence of God more and more in our life and to long more and more for the second advent We celebrate today the first Advent, but we also point forward and look forward to the second Advent where Jesus will one day come and make all things new, that he will reign and rule and bring peace and life to all things. Advent is a season of longing, and it's a season that helps us to reorient our longing and our desires for what God wants. Well, today we pivot into Christmas. And one of the great joys that we celebrate as we pivot into Christmas is not only do we reorient our desires and our longings, but we actually get to celebrate one of the greatest displays of God's desire and God's longing. In our gospel reading today, we heard these words, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace, and full of truth. Now, if you read through the Bible and you pay attention to phrases that are repeated, there's this one phrase in different iterations that is sort of repeated all the way through the Bible. It starts in the Old Testament and it traces all the way through. And the first time we hear it is in in the Old Testament, at the very beginning of the Old Testament, God says, and all of this, what he's saying, all of this, all of these things I've done, in choosing you and protecting you and and giving you a way to live. All of this, everything that I've done in seeking you out is so that I will be your God and you will be my people and I will dwell in your midst. 
And you see that phrase through the Psalms and through the prophets. And then again, we see that phrase here where we just read in John chapter 1, in that verse I just read, that God would dwell here among us. He made himself flesh and dwelled among us. And if you happen to be on Instagram this week, we have, a, we have a functional Instagram account. We're not like, you know, super good, but we have a functional account. And you will see that we invited you to Christmas Eve, and we put a verse at the bottom of there, and it was from the book of Revelation. Revelation. Good, you all passed. <laughs> you all passed. Flying colors. It was from the book of Revelation, and it says, Behold, this is... This is the book of Revelation where everything is going. All of God's plans are being summed up in the book of Revelation. And it says this, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. God's desire. God's desire is that he would be our God and that we would be his people. Now, this isn't a needy desire. This isn't a desire of need. It's not because he needs us to be his people, but out of his great grace and out of his great joy, he calls us his people, and he desires to dwell together with us. It's the big theme that runs through the entire Bible. Now, since it's also the season of holiday, Christmas parties, have any of you, you can raise your hand, have any of you ever had the experience where you're talking to somebody at a party, and you can tell that they're just not really into the conversation? Yeah, see, lots of laughs. No hands raised, but lots of laughs. You know, they're checking their watch, they're looking at their phone, they're sort of looking over your shoulder to see if someone more interesting is coming into the room. Not that I've ever had this experience. And, of course, it's if, if it's just a stranger and it's just small talk, it's not that big of a deal. You find a way to politely excuse yourself and you sort of move away from the conversation. But if it's someone you care about, or if it's something you care about that you're trying to talk deeply about, when somebody's present but doesn't desire truly to be there and engage together with you, it can be quite hurtful. Now, I find it amazing. I find it beyond amazing that it is God's eternal desire that he implanted throughout the entire scriptures that he desires together to be together with us. And that's despite, that's despite what the Bible tells us, the fact that our own sin and our own choices and our own desires often lead us away from God. And, and the sin that's present in our lives creates separation from God. And that the pattern throughout the whole Old Testament and the New Testament and into the world today is a pattern of people wanting to walk their own path and to make their own way in the world, often in divergence from God himself, who desires together to be with us. And despite all of that, despite all of that, in the past, in the present, and the future, God desires to be with us, and he displayed that most perfectly and most beautifully by sending his son to be flesh to be God and man together with us, to display his desire to be together with us, to enter into the mess, enter into the pain, enter into the challenges and the joys, the limitations of this life. Jesus entered in because God desires to be together with us. Now for us as we leave here this evening, we'll sing a few more songs We'll come to the table to remember this truth that Jesus came to earth to be together with us. I want to invite you this week. This evening you might have some dinners. Tomorrow if you have kids or you're with family, it's going to be a pretty active day for most of us. But I want to invite you this week. Do vegetate, please. Relax. Hang out. But I do want to invite you this week to reflect on this truth. And allow the fact that God desires to be with us to shape our own longings and our own desires. There's an old C.S. Lewis quote that many of you probably know. It says this, It would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. And the truth is, we don't often live with a level of desire and longing that God so beautifully crafted into our souls. We're so often drawn to surface things and things of the world when God is drawing us into deeper longing and deeper desire to know him. The truth is we were made for union with God and that he would be our God and that we would be his people and that he would dwell together with us in our midst. 
So this evening, tomorrow, this week, as we celebrate this great truth, let's also reflect on this, that God desires to be with us and allow that to shape us to live a life that's deeper and richer together with him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that it is your deep desire and eternal truth that for nothing that we've done to deserve it, you desire to be with us and to love us. You demonstrate that in your Son, in his incarnation, in his life, in his healing, in his preaching, in his death, and in his resurrection. Lord, in this season, as so many things are tugging on our hearts and our longings and our desires, and in so many ways it's easy to be distracted, Lord, we pray that you would pierce through the noise, that you would show us your love, and Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would give us hearts to respond to you in the way that you would have us live. As we enter into this new year, Lord, ahead of us, we pray that you'd help us to live lives of filled with the desire and longing that you have placed within us, desire to truly be in union together with you. So Lord, we lift this time to you and we praise you and we give you glory. In your name we pray, amen.